This isn't gonna work well. It's well, fun. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Dirt Guy Drive Time. <laughs> I like to sort of make them words match the mouth. It's a little bit of fun. <laughs> I get some to stay entertained. I'm stuck in traffic. Um, speaking of traffic, oh, by the way, this is my vlog. I talk about random crap that'll change your life. Yada, yada, yada. Everybody loves me. I'm so popular. <laughs> uh, or I'm just narcissistic, which is probably the case. So anyway, oh, little puppy dog. How cute. So uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. Um, interesting things happening today. Uh, I got my Starbucks. Boom. On my way home. Uh, because that's what I do every day, but I've been doing the mobile order and then you got to go up to the front door and ring a doorbell and they bring it to you and they set it down. You can't take it from them. They set it down and they scurry away and then you grab your copy. All right. So that's just how that works. Well, this uh, today, however, I went up there and the little set it down station was gone. I'm like, well, I hope they're open. I opened the front door, boom, walked inside. And uh, the barista's in there now. It's like, hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. It was amazing. I walked in and got my coffee. I'll tell you why that's amazing in a minute. I am stuck in traffic. Look, actually stuck. Not moving. Watch. La, 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 la. See? Stuck in traffic. Which sucks, of course. But it's amazing because between traffic and walking into Starbucks... I'm thinking that people are coming out of the woodwork now. I think people are getting out and getting busy. Getting busy with it, yo. I don't know. That's what I think. That's what I'm hoping. Because I'm hoping that means we're returning to some sense of normalcy in America. You know, I'm going to go on a miniature COVID rant. Uh, just a miniature one. It's not going to be full length because i got other things to talk about. But uh, here's the deal. So three months ago, it's like... Hey, we're going to shut down for a couple of weeks. The bug's going to die. Then we can all go back to our normal lives. Three months later, we're wearing a mask in the store still. Yep. Three months later, my uh, OSHA inspector dude is writing me up for not wearing a mask at work. <laughs> Whatever. I'm not wearing it. It's against my religion. I believe God will take care of me. And I believe my face needs to be shown to the Father. I won't wear a mask. Sorry. That's what I'm saying now. I'm still sort of uh, putting the details on that one. Anyway, so here's the deal. My, uh, my team and I, I think, agreed today that we know when the COVID is suddenly miraculously going to disappear. We know when it's going to happen. November 14th. I believe November 14th is uh, the election in this country in 2020. And I think the, the 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 pawns, which are the people, will finally be able to go back to their normal lives once the uh, the king and queen or whatever, the, the chess players, are done honking everything up to get some control of an election. That, that's what we think. Anyway, so mini rant uh, noted. Uh, this next, well, you know, I want to share this next story with you. But I might have to save it to the end. I, I, I hinted at it at the end of yesterday's video. Okay, I think I'm going to wait till the end. Because it's kind of gross. Actually, it's very gross. But i got to share it with you. I share everything with you. Uh, as you know, we're experiencing uh, here on this channel uh, Black Appreciation Month or Black Awareness Month. I can't remember which I called it. I like Black Appreciation Month. That's what we're going to do. Or awareness. Crap. It's Okay, whatever. I've got my black fact. This is what we're going to do. Even though I'm a white guy over here, uh, have not lived the black life. Um, although in some in some cases I wish I, I would have because black people have, have a, a badass life sometimes. I, awesome music. They all dancing. I'm not being stereotypical. I'm just saying I watch white people dance. I watch black people dance. I'm like, how come black people got rhythm and I don't? I want their rhythm. Anyway, that's not racism. And that's the point I'm going to make right now. Uh, it became very popular at some point for for us seemingly well-meaning people to say I am colorblind. I'm colorblind. I don't see color. I just see another person. And while on the surface that sounds great, but you know what it's actually saying? Is that we're a big melting pot. Um, we're all the same. We're robots. And it's not true. Here's the thing. I am not colorblind. You know what? When I, when I see, uh, you know, I'll just say it. When I see a black person, I see the shape of their nose, their lips, their hair, uh, their build, their uh, color of their eyes, uh, different things, okay? It doesn't make them inferior, hello, but it, it, it adds to the whole mosaic of humanity for, for them to be able to celebrate who they are, what they look like, uh, their 
culture, even if part of that culture involves slavery in the past, they can pull through that and go, yeah, but that's what made us who we are, you know, or whatever. But I don't think we all need to be like turn into one sort of monochromatic race of people. I don't think so. I don't think I need to be colorblind. I think I can look at a black person and go, hey, you're black. And then go, hey, you're white. And I'm like, cool. Uh, what do you want to know about real white people? Or do you only want to know about redneck white people? No. Strike that rednecks. I don't mean to offend you. Uh, racist bastard white people. Because I can't tell you about them. I, I know because I'm not one. Anyway, I'm getting a little off topic. I just want you to know that I don't think colorblind is the answer. I think celebrating the unique character quality, the unique things that all of us bring to humanity is what it should be about. Not, not ignoring it. What the hell? Anyway, that's just my black fact of the day. Um, I hope it was a good one. Uh, I didn't originate that. I got that from uh, another video. Can't remember who the lady was who was saying it, but it was awesome. So there's that. Now moving over to my YouTube channel. It's this is like a potpourri of uh, topics today. Moving over to my YouTube channel. I got to take a drink for this next one because I got to tell you something, people. I uh, I never paid attention to this st this statistic before. But some spammer trying to sell me something to help me grow my YouTube channel some kind of way uh, sends an email saying, hey, you've reached uh, like 900,000 views on your channel. 900,000 views. And I was like, okay, whatever. It didn't really mean anything to me in the moment until I just randomly checked it again uh, over the weekend. No, no, checked it last night. One million views on my Monterero channel. One million views. I didn't I didn't think there was that many people in the world who even gave a crap about model railroading. A million views. Now, 900,000 of those are my own views because I played in a loop, you know, on my computer. <laughs> I don't really do that. I tried that once and YouTube caught on to me. <laughs> I wasn't getting credit for the views. Yeah. Curses, YouTube. No, anyway, uh, I, I just saw some of you people watch that channel and uh, in, enjoy the model railroading and, and what I'm able to do with engagement. And so I just want to say thanks. That's amazing sauce to hit a million views. That's amazing. It blows my mind. Mind blown. Uh, so there you go. Now, well, I've stalled long enough. I got, I got to tell you this this story. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If, if you're grossed out easily or if you're eating or if you're my wife, <laughs> you, <laughs> you got to stop watching. Uh, right now because it, it's going to take a turn for the worse. All right, here we go. A few days ago. Now, that's significant. A few days ago, uh, I'm sitting there at my desk and my assistant superintendent comes in and he points to a mouse trap nearby and says, hey, dude, you caught one. And I look down there. I, it's kind of hard to see. It's not in my direct line of sight. So I kind of bent over a little bit and look out. Oh, son of a bitch, I guess I did. Well, the rule is, uh, if, the, if the trap's by your desk and you catch a mouse, then you have to dispose of it. So I'm like, well, I'll take care of that. And then I got busy. And then another day went by and I got busy. And then like a weekend went by and then a day went by. And so yesterday, I was starting smelling something funny. And the funny thing is, it was right when one of my coworkers walked through the door to our office, I was like, whoa, dude, what's wrong with him? He stinks. And then it went away. And later on, he comes walking in again, and it was like, oh, man, do I say something to him? He really stinks. No, it wasn't him, my friends. And apologies to my coworker for thinking you smelled like a corpse. I just happened to look down and I saw uh, Sorry, I had to get rid of that call. I saw my little mouse there and he was just crawling at bugs. They were eating him alive. It was so gross. Luckily, we're experiencing COVID-19 because I've got gloves and hand sanitizer and barf bags. And so I went and picked him up and uh, disposed of him oh ah. like that going on inside his guts he was moving it's heinous anyway there you go that's my report for the day i think i better take that call because this kid keeps calling me 
Uh, hope you weren't too grossed out. Hope you had fun with the black fact and all the other crap I talk about. And until I see you again tomorrow on my way home, uh, watch out for the bugs. <laughs>